you'll notice that each scan position has its own coordinate system associated with it at the position of the scanner. So if we look at this scan here, for example, the last scan, this was a scan of a golf course, a couple scans of the, just a single hole on a golf course. So here you can see uh, that that was the position, that orange coordinate system is, represents the actual CSIS of the scan head. In fact, you can see a shadow there of the, the person who was operating the system. Uh, you can see a shadow. So what this allows us to do um, is a couple of things. So number one, it allows us to, um, to use that CSIS to actually crop the data. First, before we do that, I might want to filter the data. So there's a new filtering technique. Previously, we only had it based on angle. Now, angle, this was designed more for your range scanners like a Minolta uh, or a 3D3 or a Vilux where it's a single snap type image, perhaps an amp, a ferro amp, where you just take a single range image. With the spherical type data, the nature of the spherical type data is a little different. So what we do is we want to filter these long cells, these long kind of stretched cells that you see here, like the ones going across the bunker. We don't really want those to be there. Okay, that, that's not what that bunker looks like. It's actually just a byproduct of the fact that, as you kind of zoom in here, it's just stretching. It's just a graphical artifact as we kind of stretch across there. And it kind of gives you these weird kind of spikes in the data. So you can easily filter those if you just set the, uh, the ratio, let's say filter it so that uh, any long cell that has more than a 10 to 1 ratio, delete that. Or perhaps uh, any edge that's longer than, let's say, 3 meters. So these can be used to kind of quickly filter out um, bits of the data, and you can tailor these values. If it takes away too much of the data, you can certainly bring it back in. Uh, you can just kind of play with these two values. And it's just a really quick way to kind of filter out some of those long extraneous cells that you don't need. Okay. Um, so those two filters are in place, as well as filter by distance. Now, filter by distance, the, one of the benefits of having that coordinate system is that it allows us to kind of put some concentric rings around it to say, I might want to delete all data within, let's say, three meters of my camera position and remove data beyond uh, 35 looks about right. So when we hit apply, it's a simple cropping that will get rid of any data that's within that certain distance. So that's a really good way to kind of really quickly get this kind of big unwieldy data set in, under control by filtering out some of those long cells and also using the crop command to uh, get rid of data beyond a certain distance because it's not unusual. In fact, um, earlier today I opened up a data set and the, the, the data set itself was only about 5 to 10 meters. It was a room that was only about 5 to 10 meters across. There was a data set that got cap captured through a window of a tree probably about 200 meters away. And it just makes for a very large bounding box. And so you want to quickly crop that data. And that's a really useful tool for doing that.